The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Lots of things to do, and we have Rich Anderson is going to be our guest at uh, 930. Tomorrow we have Tim Boston on Friday special show all day, or all day. Da -da. It'll be the one-hour show, 55 minutes of uh, Bill Meridian of Cycles Research of Vienna, Austria. I posted the chart for the German DAX. As you can see here, we're in a possible uh, topping formation here. Uh, looks pretty clear. At least from the looking at the charts, if we look here at the FTSE, which is the next one, you can see that it has already uh, made the top and has already backed off uh, about 78 pips. So that's lining up pretty good. Now, I've got a question from two people, and so I'm going to answer that question first to the best of my ability. And if I don't do it right, I will just lie to you. Hold on just a minute. Here's what we have here. This is the British pound. If you remember, we had a lot of support down there at that 124 and change to 124.40. We went below it. But look what's happened now between July the 1st and where we are now on July the uh, 24th. The key point to look at is July the 10th. You'll see that was that low at 124.60. We rallied up. We came down and we made a low at 123.80. Okay, then we had that big upside day and then the backward day. Now, the $64 question that was asked by two of our listeners, is that a head and shoulders pattern? Well, if you take that from the day 8 or the 9th of July down to the 17th, okay, that's 12 days, okay? And if you take from the... Um, the 17th, uh, let's see, the 17th to the 12th, that would take you out to the 29th. That would be here on um, next, uh, be on Monday. Okay, so the problem, here's the problem with the head and shoulders pattern defined by um, uh, John Murphy in his book, Technical Analysis of the Commodity Markets. The, the problem is the right shoulder, and it's, it's really close, it really is, but the right shoulder should be higher than the left shoulder. The left shoulder was at 124.65. The right shoulder has been 124.45. Now, that could still be a head and shoulders pattern. It certainly could, especially if we get above 126. I would have to say that that was it, but it's not perfect. In perfect head and shoulders, the right shoulder has got to be equal or higher than the left shoulder on a nut move. You see that? You see the difference there? Uh, that, that's a small difference, but, you know, when you're uh, when you're looking at these, you have to pay uh, close attention to it. On the long-term chart doesn't mean a whole lot but on this uh, daily chart it certainly does and folks when you remember when you're trading the british pound on a 15 minute chart that is totally different than trading the british pound on a daily chart that time frame is you know it makes the world a difference the charts are different so you have to remember that short term trading is different than long term trading there is a uh, you know, and I, I'm not the type of person that likes to stare at the monitor all day long. So uh, if, if you, you know, I try to do it early in the morning, of course, but, you know, I see, look for the setups that I'm trying to find the best. And that's really what uh, really what I'm looking at. So that's I hope that helps on the definition of the head and shoulders pattern. But we got a chance here for a bottom. And I'll tell you another thing, just looking at these charts and listening to the news this morning when I first got up um, a few hours ago, checked on uh, Bloomberg, what was going on, and my gosh, it was universal that the uh, euro is going lower, and right now it is going lower, but uh, let, let's look at that euro one more time, because I think it's at a real critical level. Here's where we were last Sunday when I sent the uh, letter out. You can take a look. Uh, we were trading at 112.21, looking for it to get down to 111. Uh, and we're at 111, uh, what, 820 or something like that right now, 11130. So we're very, very close. And that could be a major double bottom. Well, most people that, you know, do this kind of stuff, they don't look at the patterns that we do. So there could be a really good bottom down there below that 111, uh, 
111.30 level. So keep a close eye. Look what happened the last time that it made the 1.618 and 1.27 expansions at 111.30. We rallied $3,000 up to the 61% level at 114. So even though it looks... Uh, you know, like it's getting ready, and it, believe me, folks, <laughs> below below 110.70, it will go lower because the risk on that would only have to be 30 pips because if it gets below that, you know, it's in no man's land and to be looking at something, you know, a whole lot less. But it's got that potential, and the reason why it has that potential is if you look at that ABCD pattern that's there, and this is a daily chart. So it's you know it's not short term, but if you look at the daily chart, we have a nice 382 rally. It came up to the 128.90, and that uh, measures down to one uh, right near that 111 again. So that could be very very interesting. In fact, what you would be doing is you'd be taking out all all of the stops over the last six months, and if it doesn't go anywhere, that's the one you want to be looking at. If we look at that on the reverse side, which is the U.S. dollar index, and we've been very bullish that, i.e. very the euro, we've gotten up to this 127 and change level already. See, we've completed that ABCD on Friday, and we've been up every day this week uh, down in the euro. So here again, we're coming into the same type of move here uh, in the uh, in the uh, U.S. dollar index. Uh oh, I just saw something here that could be a uh, head and shoulders pattern, boys and girls. Holy moly, guacamole! Let's double check that. That's worth the price of admission. Let me come up here and uh, grab this little thing here so we can take a quick look at this dollar index and see if we can see if that is the case. Uh, not really, but close enough. Let's just get this up here, and uh, what I'll do is, uh, okay, oh, you know what I need to do is I am just going to, uh, I'm going to delete everything here. Just give me a second because it's easier for me uh, to uh, check this. And Yeah, there we go. Give me one second, and we will... Uh, I'll have this all ready. This is worth it, I believe. And I need, you know, this is one of the reasons why doing this show at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning is not good for the old cowboy because that's my most critical time of the day. And I would like to uh, uh, to see if that's going to be the case. Here, here, just a minute here. We're, we're, um, I want to draw the line so we can see where we are. Okay, get that line in there to draw it. Let me... Uh, Hold on, I'll make it nice and thick so we can all see it. All righty. Okay, now we're ready. Let me get this up here so you folks can take a quick look at it. Okay, here's that dollar index that we're looking at. Now, that was with all the numbers gone, but you can see the left shoulder back there on March 4th is 97.65. I don't know where we are right now. This is this is delayed because I don't trade the dollar index. I always trade the euro. I, the last price I had was 97.42. Now, if we're at 97.65, that will be a head and shoulders pattern because you've got your left shoulder at 97.65, your right shoulder at 97.65 or lower, then that would certainly be uh, certainly would be uh, setting up for a head and shoulders pattern. Now I'm not. Uh, someone tell me please at the den where we're trading here on this uh, little puppy here for the. Uh, hold on one second here so I can see where the where's the dollar index trading right now. I heard Tom O'Brien on the early morning show, but. Until I saw the chart here, it didn't mean anything. No, it's 97.60 or 70, isn't it? That what's been the high so far today? Come on, boys and girls, you got to help the old cowboy. I can't do this alone. 97.65 is what I'm looking at at that dollar index. Uh, don't see it anywhere, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Everybody's asleep over there in the room, so I think I'll go to sleep too. There we go, 97.67. Russ, you're the main man. Keep the faith, brother. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I put the, <laughs> thanks, Al. I put the uh, uh, dollar index chart up again, and if you look at that high over on the far left, uh, you'll see that was uh, when we were right around March the uh, 1st, where it said double top. That price was 97.81, and the high today in that dollar index is 97.81 today. So we have a matching high. That means that the left shoulder and the right shoulder are spot on. So uh, that might mean something, you know, these numbers sometimes, you know, line up pretty nicely. So, you know, we just have to uh, have to wait and see. Now, I heard something from the uh, uh, Wall Street Journal today that the blue horseshoe is watching one market really, really closely this morning. I'll bring it up here to let you look at it. And that is the old platinum up here at this 875 level folks keep a close eye on the platinum platinum at 875 that completes several abcd patterns uh it makes the larger abcd uh, excuse me the larger 61 percent retracement spot on which is uh you know really right where you uh right where you want to be so watch the platinum the, probably the safest place uh, to sell the to, to to get it short platinum is wait till it backs off about four dollars. In other words, do it on a sell stop at uh, eight uh, seventy one, and if it gets there, you know it's already moved down from the high. Then you put your stop above the high so you can trade platinum, which is a you know forty thousand dollar contract for about two hundred bucks. So that's the safest way, you know, to use that one. So watch it very closely. Uh, very, very interesting. Now, silver came up and matched those old highs again. I'm not sure whether it took it out or not. We're having a little bit of a rally in gold. I think gold will have trouble at 1430. But if we get gold above 1430, that'll be a game changer. And I would have to reevaluate to see whether that is uh, going to continue, uh, you know, going up. But right now, it still has a bearish bias. Uh, in the gold as we uh, as we look at these here uh, early this morning. Now, there's another one that we have on our watch list that deserves our attention, and that is the natural gas. I want to bring this up here because it's very important. 
we are looking at this uh, pattern right here. You can see uh, during the April-May rally, you had a beautiful ABCD stopping at the 78% retracement. The June-July rally, the same distance, in other words, the rally in April to May is equal to the rally in June, July. It stopped at the 61% retracement. And now what we've done is we came down here on Monday, stopped exactly at the 78% level, and then had a little bit of a rally. Folks, if this goes below 222, uh, you don't want it. You know, you're just going to have to find a better place to, uh, to get in the natural gas because this is a, a risk control situation. Uh, we don't know the fundamentals, and we don't profess that we do, but it needs to hold that uh, 222 level. The old low was 224, trading at 227 and change right now. So uh, that's one that you want to uh, you know, pay relatively close attention to because we do have a bullish bias of that based on the technical picture. But below 222, you have to uh, surrender that bullish bias and think it's going to go down a lot lower. And remember, you know, we've been below two dollars several times in natural gas over the months. So uh, that's not uh, years. Excuse me, the last couple of years. So it could easily do that. Longer term, it has got great potential, but it's got to hold that 222, folks, because you know there's could be news out there from Russia or whatever, whatever, and that would make it, uh, you know, it could get hurt really badly, and you don't want to do that. So same thing in platinum. If we get platinum above that 882 level. That would tell you that there's probably something wrong, or the expansion is going to be bigger than what we think, and you don't want to uh, you don't want to mess with that. So keep that in, in mind, you know, very very closely. Now I have to check something here. Someone's asked a question, and I need to find double check something to make sure that I get the right uh, the right answer. If you give me one second here, and see where we are. Okay, there we go. 876. Okay, give me let me one second here, and then I'll be able to answer this. I'm doing too many things at once. And uh, yes, we did take out the high of silver. Uh, the old high was 862. We made a high today of 867. We made it uh, a little bit above it. We're still right at the 61% retracement on that daily, folks. So we're right in that ballpark. I don't think this is any more than a uh, than a rally up here, both platinum and silver. But you know, we'll have to uh, have to wait and see because they're lining up as if they're getting ready to uh, have a move uh, that could be. Uh, uh, significant to the downside, so we'll see. Now, gold has already broken quite a bit. You know, we went from four, from one, uh, fourteen hundred and fifty-five all the way down to fourteen. We dropped to uh, forty, what forty, yeah, forty-four dollars an ounce, and we rallied back a little bit. We're fourteen twenty-seven right now, so we'll see if it's going to uh, continue to move down or not. But uh, uh, if we get gold above fourteen thirty, I would assume that this uh, has turned it back up bullish. And uh, we'll have to uh, look at that. We'll have Rich Anderson on to talk to us about the grains. The grains are holding up incredibly well, folks. It's just uh, a matter of time. I think next week is what I'm looking at. Uh, as we come into August 1st, that's the really key time of growing for the soybean market. And if we should get really hot weather across the Midwest, uh, boy, the beans don't do well in hot weather, especially if there's no rain. Uh, they can, you know, lose their ability to produce. There's usually three beans per pod, and if we get beans that are, you know, two beans per pod, you're looking at a, uh, you know, a re reduction of possibly a third in soybeans, and that you don't want to have happen if you're if you're uh, bearish because it could really mean a big move to the upside. I've been asked to talk a little bit about a market. We have some really uh, strong uh, people uh, indicators over uh, indicators, some strong followers for TFNN over in uh, India, particularly in. Uh, in Mumbai, and I wanted to bring up the uh, Nifty 50 for the uh, for that market. Just and the only reason I'm showing you this, folks, is that these markets are all the same. Uh, I've I've drawn in the dotted lines just to show you the pattern. You see, we're making a double bottom down here at this 11,254 level. The expansion that we had up at the top there, which was in late May, that was a 1.618 expansion of the move from April to May. And you know, to prove to prove that, do the work yourself, folks. Draw those lines in and draw the ratios in and see them for yourself and measure the ABCDs. You can do this. You know, this is not rocket science. You're not trying to, uh, you know, put a man on the moon. You're just trying to find out what the heck you think is going to happen in the next uh, two or three days in the nifty 50. So. That's really what you're looking at. It's all about risk control. It's not about whether being right or wrong. You're going to be wrong a lot. 
Like, remember what old Grandma Pez used to tell me, when you get into that swamp to kiss the princesses, you're going to have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find the right one. So keep in mind, that's something that you need to look at. Folks, you know, we had a big run in the market these last two days, but folks, that, that has been done by about 80 to 100 stocks. The rest of the market did not do anywhere near that well. Uh, if you just look at the New York, just for yourself, just go look at the New York Stock Exchange Index. I'm going to put this up here, and I'm going to let you look at it. And you'll see that New York Stock Exchange Index did not even attempt to take out last week's high. Not even attempt. The same thing with the Russell 2000. It even it, it is still following the head and shoulders pattern and was uh, basically up uh, very, very slightly and made a higher high on the previous day by two ticks. And it's lower today. So these are it's not nearly as bullish as the market is trying to tell us. I don't think it looks that bearish, but it's not as bullish as what you think. Stay tuned for Rich Anderson after the break, folks. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, folks, we've got Rich Anderson on of Anderson Capital Management. Rich, how are you doing this morning? Doing great. How are you doing, Larry? 
I'm still hanging in there, buddy. Staying away from open graves, as they say. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, a question that we have for one of our listeners, the hog market. We've uh, you t- The last time you were on, you were really friendly to the December and October hogs. They've had a really nice 10-cent run here. Do they have more to go on the upside, or is this where they're going to stall out a bit? You know, I was thinking, I was thinking about that this morning. Uh, First of all, the imports from China, not from the U.S., but the imports from China are, are up big um, because they've killed off so much of their hogs. So at any point, they could all of a sudden become a buyer in this country, and, and their needs are, you know, massive. It makes our production look inconsequential practically. Sure. Um, so, so it makes it impossible to... Be short. The July one off the board selling off about ten dollars uh, as it went into expiration, and the August mm-hmm. goes off the board in the tenth to the day of August. The cash market's actually underneath the futures. The futures is catching up because of the heat wave. The cash prices have gone up. You know, I'd buy dips, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't. I wouldn't chase rallies. Uh, you know, it's a it's uh-huh. a politically motivated deal. We we uh, you know, sino grain. And uh, the Chinese have kind of announced that it's a goodwill gesture. They're going to buy two to three million tons of soybeans. Well, that's that's not a consequential amount. It's a, it's a start, but it's not a consequential amount. Uh, the, the trade negotiations on Monday have been moved. You know, they're in uh, uh, Shanghai, aren't they, rather than Beijing? Uh, the, huh. Yet you have uh, some of their publications talking. Uh, Militarily about how you know the America has to rule the black ant. So you have these yeah. geopolitical things, and it makes it tough. I'd I'd rather go with patterns that look like they're exciting to me. And the one that has caught my eye is the uh, the silver. You know, I mean mm-hmm. it's it's broken a, a monthly three year trend line. The gold silver ratio mm-hmm. seems to have rolled over. Uh, I think your friend Mr. Garman yesterday, and several other people, your friend Rick mentioned that the gold-silver ratio, when it's weak, is typically when you have a strong uh, metals market. Uh, a couple shows ago, I was on and mentioned that the reason I like gold is because we had $11 trillion of negative interest rates. Uh, we have the ECB announcing tomorrow what they're going to do. And I think this $11 trillion is now closer to $14 trillion, and, and it's going to be even more negative. And then next week, uh, you know, so... I, I find other places that look more interesting. Uh-huh. Rich, uh, let's take a quick look here at the wheat market. You know, I was chatting with Cy yesterday, and he's uh, beginning to get uh, pretty friendly to wheat. We've got if we can get it down here about another eight to ten cents. I think we're pretty close to that right now. We've got a nice little uh, support level here uh, in the wheat contract. Do you have any feelings on the wheat? Well, you, you know the. You, you have you have to look at the technicals because you know the fundamentals are there's wheat's growing almost all over the world. Um, they, the heat wave we have here had in this country, you know, in Paris, they've had a, an amazing heat wave. I mean, they're now talking about how are they going to cool, cool nuclear power plants if the rivers get too warm. I mean, so this heat wave in in Paris and in, you know in France in general. Uh, I think you look for the uh, reversal. It's it's uh, it's had a nice sell off. The bears are telling you that uh, you know there's a big head and shoulders pattern, but these head and shoulders patterns don't always follow through. We're we're in the beginning and through the middle of harvest, and as we go north, harvest starts down Texas and goes north into Canada, um, and and that puts pressure on it puts it seasonally puts pressure on the wheat market. And that pressure should be alleviated by by the first of August, and then you go with the technicals. And the first bite signal you get, you jump all over it. Uh-huh. How how hot is it back there, Rich? Is it you're, of course you're in Minneapolis, so it's you know well, not. Uh... Yeah, we're we're on we're on the edge of it, so we we didn't really you know we've had a couple of ninety degree days, but it it hasn't it and it rains all the time. It's it's been unbelievable. It's to the east of us where it's been tough. Um, so yeah, we, we've actually had a pretty good, the, the, the key thing is 
everybody's wondering what the prevent plan is going to be. How many actual acres were planted that won't that will get harvested? I mean, the government's currently looking at 91 percent. That is going to happen. They know it's not going to happen. The next big report is in August after resurveying. I think we'll have a realizing market, much like 1993 in the corn. So the wheat and corn will go together. The wheat will probably bottom first because it'll have been through its harvest, it'll be through its harvest pressure. Um, and it's, it's going to all work together and, and it'll end up moving much, much higher. But these markets are really price drivers are the algos and the algos are watching every keywords and every news feed and every Twitter feed and whatever they hit the, you know, one buys and another. And, and that's what pushes these things. That's mm -hmm. why you have to be a technical trader. Yeah. Rich, explain to the folks what you mean by algos. I mean, we got a question right now from someone well, in the dandy doesn't understand algos. You want to tell them what you're looking at? Well, th these are just computerized trading programs that can change their orders faster than you or I can blink. Okay. And, and by the way, their servers are right next to the exchange servers. So they've got the, you know, they've, they've got the shortest distance to the exchange server to change their orders. And then they're, they're monitoring maybe a, a hundred, 200 news feeds searching for keywords of maybe 10 or 15 things. And whenever they see that, and then the market starts to do this, they just automatically buy or sell X. And it's, and that forces another algo that's doing something very similar to, to do the same thing. And, and that's why you see these swishes up and down in, in uh, all markets, the oil market, uh, the stock market, bond market. Mm -hmm. And it's like tomorrow, the ECB, their, their announcement, the algos will be just hot as can be on that. And they can just react so much faster than we can because it's all being done by a computer, not by not by a human, not by a hand. There are humans monitoring this stuff, and they're called tech. You know, they're 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 called technicians. A lot of them are physicists, stuff like that. But it's uh, you're competing on it. The shorter term you're trading, you're competing against machines, and the machines are just mm -hmm. way faster than you can ever imagine. Mm-hmm. No, that's for sure. Uh, Rich, uh, one of the questions that someone's asking us about the uh, you know the situation with Iran and uh, the Great Britain about these uh, tankers and stuff uh, with the oil market trading at fifty-seven dollars uh, a barrel. What uh, uh, you have a feeling for where you think oil's going? Well, I mean, we've increased our productions in this country something in the Permian Basin and all these others between the natural gas and the crude. Uh, stocks have come down some, but as an example, there's uh, Hey, Rich, we got to pay a few coast. bills, Rich. Stay with us, and we'll be right back with Rich Anderson right. of Anderson Capital Management. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. 
Right now, you can spend only $495, and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars. So you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of the Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any Tiffany newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, hey, Rich, we got a question from one of our listeners uh, about the government Department of Justice going after some of the big uh, tech companies. Uh, have you got any feedback on that that you might be able to help us with? Well, we're we're getting um, we're getting into election season. You'll start to hear all kinds of you know funny stories. Um, I mean, Facebook just paid a fine in Europe. But it's not just here; it's all over the world. Mm -hmm. It's all over the world. And going back to the other question about the oil, do you realize that Iran has two tankers sitting off the coast of Brazil that it's trying to lean on Brazil to refuel, but they don't want to. Get caught up in this, uh, you know, deal with the, the bands that the U.S. is connected to uh, Iran. So they're, you know, they're refusing to refuel these tankers. Um, I mean, it's, it's, geopolitics is really driving a lot of this stuff, and you just don't know what's going to what's going to happen. And that's true for companies. You know, that uh, if the Europeans want to play hardball they try and attack our our biggest biggest companies and you know certain politicians to get in the headlines you know they'll get committees going and get their agencies going after that's the kind of silly season we're in right now oh yeah it's certainly political i didn't realize this thing going on in brazil rich uh, what would be uh, what you, what's on your watch list as far as you know we got corn coming down here uh, you know, getting close to some really key support areas. Do you have any particular trade that you'd like to share with us, uh, with our listeners here? Well, I, I mean, when I talked about the hogs a couple times ago, it was because a, a report had come out and it was negative and the market had sold off into the report. And I figured there's no risk. It had to go up. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, uh, they, they've been pounding on the corn. This is the time of the year when they typically, uh, you know, it's hard for the corn market to go up unless you, have real heat or drought. I think we're, the crop report in August, I think you're going to see this corn market start to find it. It'll catch and hold here and start to go up, and it will go up into November. And I, I guess I would lean towards the corn being probably the that's at the top of my list. But markets that I don't normally trade, the silver, I mean, when you have a monthly breakout, that's a big deal to me. That's a market that could have a move way more than, uh, you know, what we can mm -hmm. imagine. And that's the time frame I can make money in so that I don't have to compete against the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. You know, Rich, a couple months ago, back in April, you warned of a double top in cattle, and they dropped uh, 20 cents a pound. What are you, what are you looking at now in uh, December cattle? Well, the, the, you know, the cattle market's been moving up recently. Uh, just be, 
I think, because the idea that pro- protein, there's going to be a uh, demand for protein. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't chase this rally if we uh, have some kind of a nice retracement. I'd be willing to uh, take a look at it, but I wouldn't. Frankly, the uh, these cattle are up near the highs from a couple of weeks ago, and that they may very well make higher mm-hmm. highs by a little bit and then fail. So I, I'm, it, do, it doesn't catch my eye. Rich, are they talking anything about this Beyond Meat stock that's, you know, a substitute of vegetarian meat or whatever it is? Have you ever tasted it by any by any chance? Did you know that, what it tastes like? Uh, I ha- No, I haven't. I've talked to mm-hmm. people that have, and they, they you know, has, uh, hey, it's made out of peas. There aren't enough peas in the world to, you know, to validate the price of the stock. It uses all kinds of, you know, flavorings and, ch- and chemicals to, to uh, come up with this product. And every meat company out there, every packing company out there is still looking to recreate their own version of that. The closest, mm-hmm. I've, I've tasted some uh, vegetarian meatballs in Detroit when I was at, in Detroit for that meeting a couple of months ago. And uh, they actually had the texture and, and flavor that was, you know, quite pleasing for a, a person that's not a vegetarian. <laughs> so, I, I, but but to make these things, it takes it takes a lot of chemicals and stuff. And I, is that going to be any healthier than, you know, beef yeah. or pork or chicken? Yeah, that's like genetic engineered corn too. Remember, we we went through that a right. couple times uh, to see what's uh, going on. Listen, I know you're real busy this morning, and I want to thank you for coming on. So, uh, you know, keep the faith, and uh, we're going to try to have Cy on next uh, week after next uh, visit with him. So, thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll keep in touch like we always do. And all the blessings for the family, folks. Put some white light out there. We got a little bit of an illness over there in the Anderson family that could use some prayers. So we're praying for you, buddy. So keep the faith. All right. Thank you. You have a good birthday this weekend, too. I, I don't have no idea there's been a disconnection I here know, with you the Internet. I know young people so they can drink before they're 21. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, folks. Uh, let's move on here uh, to one other one that I wanted to talk about, and that is the uh, Australian dollar. Uh, we'll take a look here. We've had some really uh, good moves here in the Australian dollar. We're getting up near that 71 area. We're still right around 70. If we could get that Australian dollar up around 71, this has a uh, longer-term bearish picture, and the Australian dollar really follows what the Australian stock market does. My goodness, it just really you know lines up uh, you know really pretty easily. So take a look, uh, folks. Uh, several questions have asked me about this euro. Hey, I'm just taking a, a sophisticated you know guess down here that it's going to hold this 111 and change level because we've got that. Really nice, ABC. I'm expecting one more jab down to get down to that 111, maybe take it out by just a little bit. And if it doesn't collapse from that level, you know, you can put on, uh, you can buy the euro. You don't have to risk more than, you know, 400 bucks. You got a $100,000 contract, and it would certainly have a four or five to one uh, risk reward favor in your favor. So that's really, you know, what you're what you're really trying to do is to put that, you know, line it up together so that you're able to see you know, see how it works. So that's my two cents worth. Whether that helps or not, I don't know. But that's what we're that's what we're watching. So let's keep a. Uh oh, boy, we hit 14:30 in the gold, folks. That's that means that there could be uh, something really big happening. We're starting to move up in the stock market too. So this could be a, a pretty bullish day, maybe across the board. We got to get above 14:30 though uh, in the gold. We hit it exactly, and we we hit above it, then that's going to tell us. Right now, that doesn't. Doesn't mean a whole lot, so we'll we'll watch it very very closely. Anyway, um, the euros right now is trading at one 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 five. Uh, the low was one 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 two five, so we've only rallied you know very very slightly, about 20 pips. Doesn't really mean very much at all. And of course, this is the first half hour of the trading day for most of the stock indices, so that's usually what we call amateur hour. That's a time that you don't really want to be, uh, you know, chasing the market at any particular time. Uh, regarding the uh, the oil market, folks, you know, we do have some resistance in the oil at the uh, 57. Uh, 50 level basis of September crude. Uh, that's a very very important number. We hit it. We hit it yesterday uh, in a very. Uh, actually, did we hit it? Yes, we did. Yeah, we did get up there at 57.50. And so today, the number you want to be watching here is around 57.20. And then we're going to find out whether it's going to be. Uh, 
holding in that level right now. So that's basically what we're looking at. Someone asked me about this, the gold level at 1430, folks. That's just based on these numbers of, uh, of, you know, how the market goes up and down and, you know, what it's done previously. You figure out what it's going to do in the future. That's really what you're looking at. So those are the things that we're, we're watching here early this morning. So uh, watch, the, watch the time frame of around 1030 today in gold, folks. That's the one that's going to be the most interesting, I believe, because it should be uh, pretty good. Okay, we'll take a little break. You'll be right back and wind up the show. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we want to uh, uh, keep a close eye on this U.S. dollar, as we mentioned when we started the show. Very, very important down here at this 111 area in the euro, uh, equivalent to that high we made so far in the dollar index today. If we get that dollar index above 98, that would certainly tell us that the euro is getting most probably ready to head down to those lower levels on the long-term weekly that we've seen at that 108 to 105 level. But we've got to 
we've got to really shatter that 111 area in order to get to that level. There's a lot of support setting there at that particular time. The other thing that is very important is that natural gas, folks. I know we, we have a bullish stance on that. Uh, we have a slight profit in it, but below one below 222, you don't want to hold it. So your risk here is only a few hundred dollars and you don't want to mess with it. I want to share with you a chart that comes from uh, one of our uh, trading friends over in India. It is the dollar index, the way they look at it. It's a little bit shorter term. Uh, a chart that you're looking at, this is over the last five or six days, uh, excuse me, a little bit longer than about the last two weeks. And you can see here that same number that we're looking at in the U.S. dollar as they look at it uh, from their uh, vantage point over there in Mumbai. So remember, this market that's going up here, you know, it's basically doing it on 100, between 80 and 100 stocks. The rest of the market is not, uh, you know, following through as much. We're making a higher high today. Than yesterday, of course, in the New York Stock Exchange Index, but we're not even close to the old highs as of yet. And same thing is with the Russell uh, 2000. The IWM is also doing the same thing. If we get above 1430 today, folks, and the silver breaks out above uh, 1670, we're probably getting ready to have one heck of another run in this. The platinum's up against some real serious resistance at this 875. So far, the high has been 878. Trading at 876 right now, early in the day. So, sort of keep a you know very close eye uh, on that one. Remember, tomorrow we're going to have Tim Bost as our guest, the Financial Cycles Weekly out of Sarasota. And on Friday, try not to miss that show, folks, because we're going to have Bill Meridian on from uh, Vienna, Austria, Cycles Research, and of course, you know the quality of his work is really superb. So. Have a wonderful day. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. 